laws, regulations, covenants, what have you, with your antennas around your house. Uh, I want to start off by telling you, uh, as by mandatory disclosure, I'm a retired patent attorney. I hold degrees in elect electrical engineering and law, but I have no particular expertise in the subject I'm about to discuss with you. That has never stopped me before, <laughs> and I won't tonight. All right. Who says I can't put up my antenna? You've run into that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about the, your local homeowners association? You think they'd approve that? <coughs> no. I don't think so. I have a question for you. All right. If, if you can sell that off as a TV antenna, it's keep it more than 20 feet. We're, we'll get to that, all right? <laughs> In that case, you can it out. If you keep that up, you're going to be giving this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a side story there, so I won't tell you. All right, okay. okay. No, this will be fine. There's the federal government. Let's start at the top. There's a the state government. There's local government. Fairfax County, whatever. And then there's the all homeowners association. Huh? <laughs> Federal government, the FCC implements the Telecommunication Acts passed by Congress and signed by the President. You already knew that. PRB 1 is a memorandum of opinion from 1985, and that will be uh, important to you uh, at some point. We'll get to that eventually here. Um, now, under the FCC uh, opinion, there should be reasonable accommodation for amateur radio installations. This is a federal level now. We've got the 1996 Telecommunication Act, which is what you're referring to. This is the over-the-air reception device rule. And in the, in the way our government works, you hire uh, people to go lobby your congressman, <coughs> pay them the monies for, for their next campaign. And this particular, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, I've not researched this, but I think this was passed at the behest of the satellite communications folks, dish antennas. And they convinced Congress that, hey, you know, there's not enough competition. All of these uh, areas are already cabled. You know, you've got uh, Fios and Thompson and various others. There's not enough competition. We want to put dishes on these houses and their local homeowners association won't let us. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. So this is an important section of the Code of Federal Regulations. Prohibits restrictions that impair the installation, maintenance, or use of antennas used to receive video programming. These include a dish antenna, one meter or less in diameter, designed to receive direct broadcast satellite service, and an antenna designed to receive local TV broadcast. Notice that last clause. We're not talking about dishes in that last clause. Okay? Now Virginia, believe it or not, not the most progressive state in the union, but here they are. Virginia has a, a code section for the placement of amateur radio antennas. If you are in a rural area, population density of 120 persons or less per square mile, the local jurisdiction, county, cannot restrict your antenna tower to a height less than 200 feet. If you're in a more urban area, 
120 persons per square feet, our square mile or less. Then the limitation can't be any greater than 75 feet. So don't, don't run ahead of me now. Go put up a 75 foot tower uh, in the town of Vienna or Reston or something. Ah, here's the, here are the real problem. Covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Now I will say this, you know, we live in Reston, and you know, we have these restrictions that supposedly we agreed to. I don't remember agreeing to them. <coughs> I know that under the law, these covenants run with the, the property, but it's like a shrink wrap uh, license in uh, software, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Did you agree to that license? No, you didn't. But unfortunately, we're, we're stuck with that. And the, and the FCC will not provide any relief here. They will, they will implement uh, federal law. But this is not in the nature of a uh, law. This is a private agreement, they say. So there's no preemption. But there is, go back to the, to the uh, Telecommunication Act of 1996. That is a preemption even of the ROA or homeowner thing. So you can have an external antenna. I don't think there's 1% of the people in Reston know that they can erect a record, a record a antenna. But they can. And you know something? A lot of periodic, high definition television antenna is a pretty damn good UHF, PHF, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and radio antenna, isn't it? Now there's a, there's a house bill that died in the last Congress. It's going to be reintroduced um, in the next Congress, the current Congress. And the ARRL is going to keep people uh, apprised of when that's introduced. When it is, write your congressman. Say support this bill. What it basically is, is telling the FCC, ham radio uh, folks ought to be able to have the same uh, antenna privileges as over-the-air television broadcast. So look for that. In the meantime, you know, deal with your local homeowners association and explain to them the advantages and the uh, possibilities that they may have uh, in terms of service to the community, not, not just emergency service, but for example, uh, Herndon, for example, has a, uh, you know, uh, a run Reston has a triathlon, you know, if you can organize groups to help with the communications of these things, that might uh, encourage them. And of course, uh, do like me, resort to stealth antennas. Here's the house bill. Um, this um, bill was sponsored, I forget how many now, but it was um, a large number of Republican Congressman and almost the same number of Democratic Congressmen. Almost a hundred congressmen were were supporting this bill. I just did not be, get brought up because of all the bickering that's been going on. Um, the ARRL has a complete package. You know, you can start emphasizing uh, areas and races, uh, but um, you know, if you can, uh, we we have here that. Vienna Halloween Parade, uh, the Marine Corps Marathon, you know, these are the sort of things that um, you can uh, tell the um, your local homeowners association about. Here are some ideas for stealth antennas. Um, most of these I'm sure you've heard of at some time or another. Uh, the idea of a vertical that sizes a flagpole is, is pretty old. I've, seeing birdhouses on, on supports. Um, I saw one art, uh, article by a guy that had hidden his J-pole antenna be behind a dish antenna, <laughs> you know, so you couldn't see it. Um, and there's but, the, the antennas that I've seen all the way up to uh, uh, Misty, 
uh, just off the uh, highway there, a few of them that are cell towers disguised as trees. There you go. Yep. Absolutely. Here is, um, uh, this is not my antenna, but I have an antenna just like this. This is a Hustler vertical. Mine is painted flat black, so it's more of a stealth antenna than this, but you know, even when the leaves are off the trees, you're not going to notice that antenna. And that's a, um, I think that's a six band, um, you know, trap vertical. Uh, Butternut makes a, um, a uh, multi band uh, antenna too, but the trouble with the Butternut antenna is that the traps, the coils of the traps are on the external side of the, of the antenna, and that might make it a little less stealthy. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I like the Hustler. I'm sure you uh, have seen others. Um, also, there's um, an excellent book published by the ARL, which I would recommend. It's a little on the pricey side, it's 50 bucks. But the um, material in it is quite, <coughs> quite good. And um, uh, it includes in the back a, a letter written by the um, author who is an attorney to this homeowners association explaining why his client should be allowed to raise uh, a, a television antenna 12 feet above his roof line. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was apparently quite persuasive and the uh, homeowners folks just went away. <laughs> uh, now if you got a 12 foot tower on your roof with a television antenna, you know, it seems to me you have a few more things hanging on that tower. Um, so I would, um, I would recommend that. I would also uh, go back to the Virginia statute. Stafford County some time back had restrictive uh, rules in their county. And the uh, ham uh, that they were going after brought to their attention this Virginia statute. So Stafford County had to rewrite their zoning rules. So don't, don't be afraid to look at the Virginia statute. That will be a help to you. Um, let's see, there was uh, one other thing I thought you were to... Oh, yeah, the, the ARRL has something called volunteer counselors. So if you get into it, and you don't, believe me, you don't want to get into any sort of legal hassle with your homeowners association or anybody, you can avoid it. <laughs> the only people that win are the lawyers, <laughs> okay? But if you do, they have these volunteer counselors. There are three in our area listed. I haven't looked them up personally. I did try to see where they are located. One of them doesn't seem to be practicing anymore. There's one in Fairfax and one in McLean. They apparently will give you a free consultation, but after that, the clock starts. Um, so, you know, if you get to that point, uh, check with the ARRL site, and you can at least uh, talk to one of these volunteer counselors. You know, like one thing which people ought to even consider is there's the other thing is there's nothing in these rules that doesn't prevent you from putting an antenna inside your house. No, and you can have it inside, of course. Now here's the point though. The potential for interference from you and your neighbors, potential for hazard radiation <coughs> are considerably worse than if you had a proper antenna <coughs> Well, I was not aware of that particularly, but I can't have an antenna inside my house because I have a standing seam in my whole world. Oh. Which is amazing. Great ground blink. Huh? Great ground blink. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> on top, yeah. You might want to be careful about that argument, though, about it being less dangerous because some, some very ingenious individual is 
going to potentially go after you for environmental concerns. No. And then they're going to suddenly ban you for that. For what? Well, for radiation, they're going to start a lawsuit. Well, again, you're going to cover it up with the federal law. <laughs> exactly. A comment here on that is yes. the, the, the precedent is that the local and state, the local governments have absolutely no standing as far as uh, RF interference or, or exposure limitations for antenna installation. That is strictly under the regulation of the FCC. That's right. Yeah. But, Monty, I, I think, are the Virginia laws such that they have carved out an area that amateurs can? Erect antennas, or is everything subject to dispute? No, they, the Virginia statute is quite uh, clear. But you see, the Virginia statute does not preempt the local homeowners' agreements. What it does is preempts the your local zoning, uh, your your county zoning, and that was the problem Stanford County had. Their zoning. Uh, was quite restrictive to um, antenna heights. That statute is very precise, but it ain't going to help you in the local homeowners. Yeah, interesting situation. And for those who need Delaware, hopefully this summer I will be in Delaware with the station at a condominium complex up there. And I asked my condo people about this, and they said, "Well, is it going to interfere with our Wi-Fi?" And I said, "No, one would." Oh, it's okay, no problem. It just, you cannot attach anything permanently to the outside walls. And I said, so if I put a stand out there and had it on the stand, it'd be okay. He says, yeah, because people put flower pots and everything else. They were not willing to change the rules for all the homeowners that had flower pots and everything else <laughs> sitting out on the decks. And I said, I mean, this is a big eight story complex. Yeah. Uh, I said, yeah, you know, try to make it as stealthy as you can, but. <laughs> so the plan is is to put uh, hamstick guy poles out there, kind of perpendicular because I have a corner unit that's sticking out and painting them black. Well, yeah. I can't see it tonight this time. But it's kind of funny to, 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 to or I guess the point is to, to check what the actual rules say because it, it may be that, yeah, you could do a situation like this and put up a portable operation where you would more ideally would want to have a, a permanent. I mean, it'd be great if I could hook to the, the railing. You talk about a ground plane, it goes like 100 some odd feet down one side of the building. But there you go. Yeah. I can see some kid grabbing that right now. But anyways. Well, another, another thing you need to consider in terms of stealth antennas, you want something that you can easily dismantle. Nice thing about this uh, Hustler, um, DX Engineering makes a base for it, and you can lower that one person, a couple of, uh, well, one, one, uh, uh, screw, the whole antenna comes right out. You know, they want to come around and inspect your place. What an antenna? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so anyway, give that some thought. There's another, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll wind up with. The president of the um, Sterling Park Amateur Radio Club, Spark, Gordon Miller, has the best solution of all. He is the president of his homeowners association. <laughs> so if you can work that out, good luck to you. Okay, we're done.